We've been saying make China pay for more than two months now, but it seems countries around the world are finally warming up to the idea now. They're using different approaches. On Sunday, it was Donald Trump's turn again. The U.S. president keeps flip-flopping his way through this crisis. First, he slammed China. He called the coronavirus the Chinese virus. Then he forgot about it. Yesterday, he went back to blaming Beijing. The approach was different this time, though. It came out like a warning. The U.S. president spoke of, quote-unquote, consequences. Well, if they were knowingly responsible, certainly, if they did, if it was a mistake, a mistake is a mistake. But if they were knowingly responsible, yeah, then there should be consequences. Uh, you're talking about, you know, potentially lives like nobody's seen since 1917. Trump is stepping up his attacks on China. America and China are now going head to head. Both countries want to shape the narrative of this outbreak. Trump is holding, holding daily press conferences on this. He declared that he is not happy with China. And he went after the WHO once again. Put it this way, I'm not happy, okay? I'm not happy. And I spoke to them, and this could have been shut down a long time ago. They knew it. And we couldn't get in, and uh, in all fairness, World Health couldn't get in, and that's why I wish they took a different stance. He's not happy, he says. Trump is saying everything, in fact. He's questioning China's numbers. He's demanding accountability from China. He's also blaming them for, for the outbreak. China has issued a response today. Listen to this statement from the foreign ministry. Like other countries, China has also been attacked by the virus and is a victim of the virus. We are not the culprit, nor the accomplice of the virus. In the face of major public health crises and threats of infectious disease, the international community should stay united rather than blaming each other, rushing to hold someone accountable or demanding compensation. I don't remember there was such an international practice before. The United States wanted to send investigators to Wuhan. China denied Trump's demand by playing the victim card. The less said about that, the better. But this was the first time, perhaps, that Beijing addressed the demand for reparations. The demand to make China pay is growing. Lawsuits have been filed. We've kept you posted on that front. So why is it that China chose to respond only today? Two reasons. Weeks ago, we had told you about a lawsuit in Florida. They want billions of dollars from China in damages. Now, the law firm behind it says that thousands have signed up in support. And here's the second reason. A newspaper in Germany went one step further. It has sent a bill to China. It's an itemized invoice worth 149 billion euros. That's $165 billion. The invoice has been drawn up by Bill. That's Germany's largest tabloid newspaper. Let me describe the different charges. 24 billion euros for the tourism industry. More than 7 billion euros for the film industry, a million euros an hour for Lufthansa, the German airline, 50 billion euros for Germany's small businesses. That is the breakup. Well, they got no money, but they caught China's attention and were the latest recipients of Chinese criticism. The Chinese embassy in Beijing, uh, in, in Germany, in fact, uh, wrote a letter to the newspaper. They were unhappy with the critical coverage. Last week, Bill's editor-in-chief had published an open letter. It was addressed directly to Xi Jinping. It says the Chinese president, quote-unquote, rules by surveillance. The criticism against China is growing. The threat of reparations may seem like a long shot, but it's playing now on the mind of the dragon.